Hi, this is Digital Bike Computing. We're going to go over how to add a iSCSI type of storage to your Windows Server environment. You can also do this on clients such as Windows 7 and Windows 8. But we're going to look at on a Server 2008 uh, server box that we've got here. So essentially what you need is you need some sort of a storage adapter. All right, so you need to have a device that is uh, has a storage. So it could be a SAN, it could be a NAS uh, device. If you don't know what they are, there is a whole bunch of information about what they are. But it's essentially, it's a storage area network or network attached storage. Uh, so some some sort of storage somewhere out on your network, and you want to be able to add that onto your Windows computer so it actually sees it as a drive. Okay. So if I open up my Windows Explorer under computers, you'll see that I've just got a C drive in there and that's it. Now generally what you do is to add a another drive, you'd actually open up the computer and put in a new hard drive in there. What you can actually do is with iSCSI, if you've got a device such as a NAS or a SAN that has iSCSI enabled, you can actually add a drive from there. Okay, so you can create what's called LUNs on a SAN for example and actually add that device to your computer. So we're not going to go over how to do it on the storage side. So we have to assume that you've already got a NAS and a or a SAN or something already configured. You've got a LUN set up. You've got it detecting on the network. And we're just going to show you how to add the iSCSI initiator onto your computer and add that into your Windows Explorer. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to open up Control Panel. Okay, start Control Panel. And in here we've got an iSCSI initiator. Now I've already run this before, so you'll see that I've got two detected. Now, this is a IQN number, so this is essentially going to be a unique number for a particular, in my case, a LUN on a uh, NAS device. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is you need to actually look for that target. All right. So you'll have a device. So in my case, I'm going to do 172.16.1.50. I know that that is the IP address of my NAS. Okay. And I'm going to go quick connect. It's going to do a quick search and it's found two devices. Okay, so we're just going to say done for now. So two devices are here. I've got a test group and a LUN group. Okay, now I know for a fact that the test group is the one that I've got active and the one that I want to use on this Windows server. So I'm going to select it and say connect. Okay, I'm going to leave that as default and OK. Now that is connected. That's the first good sign. If you do get a message, like this one, authorization failed or something similar, then it's more than likely you haven't enabled uh, or like you haven't enabled it properly on your SAN or on your NAS, or you could have um, permissions issues, that sort of thing. So go and search that, make sure that you've got the permissions are the same. If you're using AD, that the authentication is the same, that you're using same username and password across your devices as well. If when you go to target and you click quick connect and nothing shows up, it could be that you've got some issue on your network somewhere. So what you want to do is you want to ensure that your storage and your computer are on the same IP range, same subnet range. Um, if they're on DHCP, make sure that they're on the same range, detecting the same range of the IP. Okay, so in my case, 172.16, sorry, 1 dot whatever. Okay, and I know my storage and my server are both on the same network. So that's been detected. Okay, that's the first step. So now Windows knows that there's some sort of device trying to connect to it. So that's it on that side. Okay, iSCSI initiator. Next thing we want to do is we now add the drive. So if we go into Windows Explorer again, you'll see that it just has a C drive. So we want to go start. Right click on computer and we want to go into manage. Okay, okay, let's just go one step back. So you want to navigate to storage and disk management. Now you may get a message saying that it's detected a device, which you saw before. Just say okay to that if it's the case. If you, if you don't get a message, it's okay. But what you'll see, it's now actually found some sort of a device that is 20 gig. Okay, that is actually the LUN size that I've created on my NAS to be 20 gig. Okay. So all I do is I right click and say initialize my disk. I want it to be an MBR disk one. Okay. And that's it. It's found it. And now I right click and I want to create a new simple volume. I'm going to go through 20 gig, assign it a drive letter, format it in NTFS, quick format, etc. 
and finish. Just going to format that drive. And if all things go well, we should now have an additional 20 gigabyte drive on Windows. So it will now finish. It's a healthy primary partition. If I close out of that, inside here now, I've now got a new drive. So according to Windows, Windows doesn't know any better. Windows thinks that it's just a drive that's attached to it directly. But because we've got the iSCSI initiator, you're actually bypassing the local storage there. And it's looking out on the network and finding it as an iSCSI drive, which in our case is a LUN on the NAS. So that is it. You can now use that drive as normal attached storage, uh, add stuff to it, and you're good to go. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, Digital Byte Computing. Thanks.